while ago, I took a look at the Algo Laser 20 Watt Solid State Laser Kit. Say that three times fast. I found it surprisingly powerful and really easy to get up and running. Well, now there's a Mark II version that seems to have made some changes and maybe even some improvements. Well, let's find out. In what they are calling the Alpha Mark II. It features an expandable 400 millimeter square working area, faster speeds, and mobile connectivity. The kit includes a test piece of three millimeter thick plywood. Er, I'm not sure what this is. Maybe some vinyl to cut. More parts and accessories. And manuals. Metal front panel has color touch screen LCD, emergency stop, manual lock, and power button. Left side has USB and USB-C data ports, air pump, and power connectors. The whole assembly is made of sturdy yet lightweight metal. Inside the front plate, I noticed two Wi-Fi antennas, one each for 2.4 and 5 gigahertz systems, along with some sort of system utility buttons. Of course, you get some eye protection. I found a few other niblets like USB-PC interface, and replacing parts for the laser lenses and handling tools. Digging deeper in the box, I located the diaphragm air pump. Parts box. And the star of the show, the 20 watt laser module, which is a pretty neat piece of hardware. Y-axis rail looks to have a NEMA 23 style stepper motor. Belt is a little loose out of the box, but that is expected and will be tightened later. The manuals are not overly verbose, but they do a fine job and are fairly easy to follow with clear pictures. This is a laser and can cause serious harm if not careful. In total, there is not a lot to assemble. And speaking of assembly, it starts with the sliding of the side frames into the front frame and is secured with 4mm screws. Hex wrenches are included in the kit. Repeat for the other side. While I was at it, I plugged in the stepper motor. The rear frame is then added. Lastly, the X-axis cross carriage. The assembly has several connectors that easily plug in. All the connectors are unique and keyed, so there's no mistake where and how they plug in. Laser module slides in and is locked in place with a lever. I like the built-in cable holder. The Y-axis uses a separate screw to set the belt tension. Y-axis has two belts to tighten up as well. They should be taut, but not overly tightened. There are also some couplers. Used to connect a cross shaft from the stepper motor to the opposite side. This allows the stepper motor to drive both sides of the Y axis at the same time. Final piece is the air pump used for laser cooling and smoke removal. Most of the connections use pneumatic push fittings. More handy hose holders. All right, my friends, we have a laser. Oops, can't forget the keys. Oh, I noticed the pump has a little air filter. We'll need to check that after a while. Before cutting, you'll need a honeycomb platform, also available from Algo Laser. It has graduation marks and plug-on parts holder. 
Okay, we are ready for some cutting. Oh wait, I forgot the most important step. Oh, 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 yeah, oh. <laughs> yeah, now we're good. Powering on. I got an odd warning screen. And it was beeping at me. What do I do? Oh, it turns out the emergency stop had been pressed. That did the trick. There is a decent choice of languages. It wanted to connect to the Wi-Fi, but there was a problem. I needed to type in the letter U, but it was missing, and in its place was another Y. Uppercase U worked, but not the lowercase one I needed. I found the bug! Oh well, I could skip that step and look into it later. While I was at it, I cleared out all the warning messages. So first, let's see if the mechanism is working by going into the control screen and manually moving the carriage. Looking good so far. Hey, the home button works too. I spent the next few moments poking through the various options screens. All the options seem to be straightforward and intuitive. There appears to be a 32 gig internal SD card, but there didn't seem to be much on it. So I went over to my computer where I loaded the same Lightburn software I used before. As soon as I plugged the computer in, the laser came alive. I clicked the home button to confirm communication. Yep, we're live. I quickly hand drew a simple shape to test the laser with and took a guess at the power level and speed for a thin sheet of balsa. The frame button shows where the cutting will happen. Now to place the wood piece, set the focus distance with the calibration tool, and lock into position. Also a good time to insert the piece holders. And of course, put on the eye protection. Press the start button, and she's alive! Turns out the setting was way more power than I needed, but a nice cut. I tried again with some 5mm thick plywood. Gonna need a bit more power. Oh yeah, did it in one pass. Like hot knife through butter. Okay, so now that I've confirmed that the laser cutter works, I think I should try to make something interesting. So after a bit of thought, I thought I would cut out something I custom designed myself. Something to help hold some of my glues. So let's first go through the design process, shall we? Okay, so the first step is you need a good 2D CAD drawing program. I've been using LibreCAD and find it fairly easy to learn. Best of all, it's totally free and supports multiple operating systems. After making a rough sketch with some dimensions, I started creating my brilliant design line by line in the LibreCAD program. The program has tools to set distances of lines and auto snap to intersections. After not much time and some online help documents, I was homing in on the complete design. Trim tools make removing unwanted lines super easy. I could also copy shapes to save time. And use temporary center lines to align shapes. Copy pasting came in real handy to clone parts. Note the text is a different color, and there's a reason for that I'll explain later. Be sure to save the drawing as a .dxf file, which is then imported into the Lightburn software. Lightburn also allows importation of graphics images like .jpg and .gif, which I then resize to fit on the piece. 
Here's where the different colors come into play. I can use them to set laser speeds and power. Where one color is a full cut, another color is low power engraving. Even the image has its own unique setting. Alright, let's once again align the part, in this case, 1 inch, inch thick plywood. Secure the wood, and set the focal distance, which is just under 5 millimeters. Press the button, Frank! Heavy cutting can put out quite a bit of smoke, so be sure to have good ventilation in your area. There's also a countdown timer for your convenience. And some live G-code display for those that like data. It was during the logo engraving that I noticed my settings were a bit off. But it worked! The cut parts that didn't fall off were easily removed. The channel logo looked okay, but it was obviously set too powerful. I'll have to experiment with the settings. Cutting platform was starting to look a bit war wary. I was curious about burning a better looking logo, so I imported the image on a blank project and increased the speed. Much better, but still a little off. Less power was even better, though maybe a little bit too light. Anyways, I went on to cutting the second sheet. Yeah, it looks like the lettering needs a bit more of a power boost. Alright, so I've got my glue caddy pieces. Uh, some minor tweaks to the laser powering notwithstanding. I think it looks pretty good. It was a nice little clean cut. And so right now I am going to assemble them for the very first time. See how well these go together with the new printer. Cutter. New cutter. Okay, so we've got two end pieces, a center piece, and this is the bottom piece, and the kind of middle piece. So, let's see how I'm going to put this together here. So, let's try the end piece here. We'll put this together to the side. We'll take this one. Look at that. It fits right in there. Perfect. Just like a little 3D puzzle. And uh, I think I'll take the other end piece here and slide it in. Just like that. So let's get these. It's a little wibbly wobbly because this nothing's glued. Come on. There we go. Look at that. Nice. Hold it together. And we will slide this piece in like this. Where it fits in the bottom. And look at that. We've got... A glue caddy it kind of says how we view there on the side and how we view scorched end deeply into the plywood on the center there so the next time i cut this out <laughs> it'll be a little better uh some of these pieces are sticking out a little bit it's purely cosmetic but i guess i have to tweak the file to reduce this a little bit uh this is an artifact from a, a uh, different thickness of wood I had planned. So um, it's minor, minor, minor. I can just leave it like that. Kind of gives it a little bit of character, doesn't it? Okay, so now I have some random bits of glue to try in the new glue caddy. I want to hold it together. I need to glue it together. I haven't done that, so things can still come out and whatnot. Uh, on one side, I have space for some epoxy. So I have some, some generic uh, epoxy from premium adhesives. Look at that, fits right in there. Two little things like that. And on the other side, I've got spaces for the, um, I forgot what these are called. Uh, these are glue commonly found in hobby shops. Uh, the name eludes me. This is a smaller size, but it still fits in there quite nicely. And I've got, of course, some Starbond adhesives. Uh, the, the channel discount. Look in the video description for that. And that fits right in there. So that's pretty good. And I got two spaces for the star bond here and here as well. So, and two slots. I made the slots a little bigger for these glues. So you can use, this is a, what is it, a half ounce. So I think the full one ounces will fit in here as well. And there's two spaces for that, two spaces for star bond type glue. And the nice thing is I can make different types. So whatever kind of glues you want. But I also 
somebody had an idea, I think. So if you look here, there's some holes on the bottom. What are those holes for, you may ask? Well, if you'd like to use a lot of epoxy, sometimes you have to wait a bit for it to come down. Right now it's a little bit warm out, it's the summertime, so it's fine, but in the wintertime, when you do this, you've got to wait for it to come down. Sometimes a good 30 seconds or something like that, unless it's heated up. So I figured I'd put a little hole in there so I can put this in upside down and I can't do it on the video. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, come on, come on, come on. Look at the camera and that thing. Let me look at the thing here. So, there we go. Ah, so it fits in that little hole. So they both can fit in this little hole right there. So now I can hold them upside down and the bottom is offset from the, there's a little lip here, here, so that you can stick in there and not stick up. And so now you can hold the glues, the epoxies upside down for those you use in colder climates, so it's ready to use at any time. And of course, there's a big hole right here for a hook, so if you wanna put this thing on a hook, that is, after you glue it, uh, you can put it on a thing. So it's a, I think it's a pretty clever design, if I may say so myself. And I'm happy that it works. This is one of the great things about using a laser cutter, is you can, not only you can replicate other designs, but you can make your own just by a little bit of CAD work. This wasn't very, very hard to do at all. Um, even for somebody newbie to CAD, there's lots of YouTube videos showing how to do basic 2D CAD, or you can you know, take a little college course or something like that, but YouTube's your buddy. And I think this is really, really pretty neat. Man, this is pretty neat. Maybe I should sell these. Hmm. Nah, who would want a piece of junk like this? Well, there you have it. Uh, now, I did get a, uh, a better look for the uh, side lettering eventually. And I also discovered my tabletop was not quite level, causing some uneven cuts. Fortunately, the Alpha Mark II has adjustable link feet, which fixed the issue. And oh, about that bug I found. Well, I rectified the issue by updating the firmware, which is easy to do just by copying the file to a USB drive and selecting Update. Now, once updated, my precious letter U returned. Hello, Wi-Fi. Now, while poking around, I also realized there was indeed some engraving files in the built-in memory. I just had to look in a folder. That said, I've been really impressed with how useful 20 watts are in cutting and engraving. The Algo Laser Mark II assembled super quick and is easy to assemble and does a great job cutting through modest materials. I like the updates they made to improve performance and ease of maintenance. Hi, thanks for watching. Please take a look at the video description below for special hobby view sales and discounts. Your purchases help support this channel. Happy modeling!